Would you care to join my following? No, sir. I do not follow. talking man but okay. see you later. thank you for coming on man hey welcome back to infinite talks podcast it's eric castillo here i'm with the champion the champion from laredo texas i got jorge castaneda let me see the actual title because it's a it's a long title for that for that belt you just got bro and congratulations wc okay. wbc international Su- silver super featherweight title champion yes. it's, yes. A, it's a long title <laughs> but it's <laughs> Yeah, man, that was right amazing. Here. Thank you so much for being on. Oh, look at that, bro. <laughs> look at that belt. Amazing belt, bro. It's, how does it feel, bro, to have it in your hands? Like, man, I still don't believe it, man. <laughs> it's an it's awesome crazy. feeling. Really happy, bro. I feel, I feel blessed to be in this position right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Bro, it's, it's like, uh, when have you you fought in here in Laredo, and I was thinking about it. Like, when I was watching your, your fight, and I was like, man, most of your fights have been here in the States. A lot of them were in the LEA, same Auto Arena. How does it feel like to all of a sudden, boom, you're going to London, bro? Like, hey, you're going to take a fight in London. You're like, what? How does that feel, bro? That's crazy. Uh, it feels amazing, bro. I mean, couldn't believe I, I was getting that opportunity. But I mean, I mean, you got to take those opportunities to go up, up in, this, in the ranks. And, you know, I mean, I, don't know, I just don't have words to explain how it feels, bro. It's not easy because uh, it's like you're going like you're going to their territory. Is that where Kamari is from? Yeah, he was from London. He was. So he's he's playing in his home like home court, you know, home court advantage. Like you got does that run through your head like damn dude, this guy's got home court advantage and like I'm going into his territory. I gotta show up. And yeah, but I'm actually that gives me extra motivation to fucking go, you know, and try that, that like that, that fires you up. Yeah. Like when they announced me in the during the fight, yeah. Everybody was booing me. I was like, instead of that bringing me down, it's just kinda gave me like more motivation. Like, You're gonna see right now. <laughs> Bro, I love that. I, I'm sorry for care because I'm always been the underdog type of guy. Like you know, like yeah. I love it when like nobody believes in me. Like oh yeah, I'm gonna prove you wrong. You know? yeah. like, I, like, I like I like that feeling, bro. I like I like it when people like tell me like I'm doing it. You're gaining weight. I'm like oh yeah, oh yeah. You're gonna watch me. I'm gonna turn it up. You know. <laughs> yeah, use that as motivation, right? Yeah. And any any sport, dude. Like when I was in basketball too. Like I'm like I'm gonna follow my ass, guys. Uh, whatever. Like oh, okay, I'm gonna go to the gym, practice, practice, practice. I'll get better. But in anything you do, man, like if, I think oh, yeah. it's better in, uh, in in that cali- type of caliber, like a situation where like I'm pretty sure there's tons of people there, and you feel the, the pressure, like damn, I gotta show up now, like 100 percent for my for my yeah, for my for my team, for my family, for, for everybody, you know, for everybody who believes in you. So I'm pretty sure that's how how you felt, like when you were in there, like okay, it's time to yeah, show I mean, up. Oh so yeah, I knew I knew I knew that to fight a uh, hard and you know bring the the win back home. Bring the bill back home to to so my family, my trainer, my sponsors, and you know to the people of Laredo, bro. Everybody was uh, give me a lot of support. So I mean, all that I used it as mo- as motivation to you know to fight hard and, and get the win. Dude, and I was watching the fight, man. Like uh, the highlights, right? Like I was telling you right now, because I didn't see the fight that day. I was actually out of town. My my daughter's birthday is actually the day after your birthday. On okay. The first, on November, so we took her to the fright fest. And I could I missed the fight, dude. So when I came back, I was like, damn, I missed the fight. So I watched the highlights, and um, dude, your your left uh, jab and your left hook, it kind of reminded me a lot of uh, Tito Trinidad, bro. That's oh, like, yeah. you, got, you gave me that style, like, oh man, this guy got that that straight jab, and then he goes to the side and the gives hook, you that, yeah. that that hook. And uh, it looked amazing, bro. So I know you were setting him up, dude. You, you're that first round, like it was a hard jab. You were just drying him back, and it was 
stiff like jab bro so how does that feel when you're in there like you're with your strategy does it change and, and during the fight or you prepare and like everything you prepared for that's what you recarry on over in the fight actually the first round i just try to box try to mm -hmm. see how the, the way he's gonna fight me if he's gonna apply pressure if, if he's gonna box you know and i just i just i knew he wasn't gonna come forward to me i mean he has he has no he had no knockout power so mm -hmm. i mean he wasn't gonna come and just brought it out with me so yeah. you know i had to take the fight with him <laughs> i could see that bro like most of the fight you guys were in the middle nobody's running away from each other like you were actually consistently chasing him around and I saw that, like, you were even taking some punishment to get to him. Like, you know, like, I'll take some yeah. punishment. You even take some, you, you got a good chin, bro. And then you got a good <laughs> chin because you got hit. You, it looked like you got rocked, but you look, you didn't look phased. You're like, let's go. Yeah. So, I just got stumbled a little, a little bit. I wasn't hurt at all. That's but like good, I said, man. I, yeah, I had to, you know, risk a little bit to to get my punches in. Yeah. And I started working the body, too. I, I knew if I, I, would, I worked the body, I mean, he was going to bring it, bring the, the level of fight. Down. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell, like, towards the end, I mean, you you said earlier, like, later on in post-fight that you were getting tired, but you didn't look tired during the fight. Com com compared to Kumari, dude, that towards the last part, like, of the rounds, I mean, I think it was 7, 8, 9, all the way to 10, he, he kind of declined in energy. Like, you can yeah, tell, like, he was losing momentum. Cool. And you were still at the same pace. And you said, dude, like, your legs were giving out, like, at the post-interview. I was like, damn, dude, it didn't look like it, bro. It didn't look like it. You have really good conditioning, though. Yeah, well, actually, it was because I trained in Mexico City at the Centro Ceremonial Otomi. I mean, it's mm -hmm. 10,000 feet above sea level over there. So, I mean, oh, you know, I, my conditioning was, was great. But, you know, I ate some tacos over there and my, my, <laughs> stomach, my stomach. So, I think that was, that was the, the issue with my legs. Yeah, and how long ago before the fight was that? When you ate those tacos? Like, it was like two weeks before the fight. Dude. We were actually going to call it off <laughs> because, you know, I was too messed up. Dude. But I mean, I, I knew I, I had to, I mean, I couldn't lose this opportunity. I mean, there was a belt involved and yeah, you know, against an undefeated fighter, I was going to rank up in the, like in the ranks. So, I mean, yeah, you had to go. Yeah, like, yeah I, I, I had home. to take it. Oh, yeah. Hey, but were they worth it? I was asking you right now, were they worth it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck. The tacos yeah, taco, Mexico best taco ever. <laughs> in Mexico City, city, right? Like down in, in the Yeah, the Ciudad de Mexico, yeah. So, dude, I was telling you right now earlier, like, dude, the tacos are over there, bro. It's just ugh, on point, bro. The flavor, it's amazing, bro. Like, uh, like I was telling you, like, I'm, I'm from Guadalajara. That's where my dad's from. So we we go, we used to go a lot over there. So the tacos from over there is just game changing, bro. I think. Let me yeah. tell you a quick story. So we went to Guadalajara when I was like a teenager, early teens, and we all wanted pizza. And my dad's like, "You all want pizza? Like, we're in freaking Guadalajara. We have tacos here. Like, nah, can I most pizza?" <laughs> Pizza. So we go to Pizza Hut. He takes me to Pizza Hut. Like takes like my cousins and us like to Pizza Hut, and, and we're eating pizza. And like just didn't taste the same, bro. I was like, damn. But we ate right. So after that, mm -hmm. we go downtown and they start eating tacos. Like the, all the adults, and we're like, damn, that smells good. taco. Nah, tu comiste pizza, cabrón. So no, but he, he bought us some tacos, bro. And the the that game changing experience after that I was like, okay, never going to go to pizza there. Just get tacos. Go straight to the source. Oh, yeah. And, but yeah, dude, it's, it's hard though because we're not used to that kind of food and it can mess up and bust up your stomach. And especially if you're a fighter, but you got to be careful about that shit. You know? Yeah, bro. I've gone three times to, to do camps in Mexico City and the three times that I go, I mess up my, my stomach. I get stomach viruses all the time. Yeah. yeah. It, it, what did you eat? Pork, pork tacos? Okay. Uh, it was uh, suadero. It's, it's meat. Oh, suadero. It's carne. Yeah, suadero. It's carne, yeah. Bro, I've never had those, but I saw them on TikTok. I mean, not TikTok. What do you call it? Uh, it's on Netflix. They have this Taco Chronicle. Oh, yeah. Like I saw the... It's like the documentary. See, bro. Like, oh, shit. I told my wife, I'm going to take... I'll make my own taco stand shit. <laughs> 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 shit, dude. I was so inspired, bro. But, dude, those tacos are amazing. But, yeah, like, you said, like, you ate those tacos. And then, boom, right away, you're like, ching. Like, like, yeah. That yeah. same day at night, I, I started bloating up. And, you know, it's so, just, like a fucking... Yeah, and it takes, a, it, it, it takes a lot of energy, I guess, like you said, like you can notice it because I'm pretty sure in other fights, you haven't had that results where like a, towards the end of the fight, you lose your legs. But in this mm -hmm. fight, you felt like, damn, I, I was losing my legs. But like I tell you, like as, as a spectator looking in, like looking from the outside in, it doesn't seem like that. But you inside the ring, you're having a different feeling and you're having you're having to like change something to kind of like finish out the mm -hmm. fight with a strong fight. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I couldn't explode. I mean, I didn't feel that much explosiveness. So I just felt my, my legs stiff and weak. But, I mean, you know, I had to dig uh, deep down to fucking mm -hmm. pull off the fight, man, and get the win. And my condition yeah. was on point. I mean, I had I wasn't gassed out. It was just my yeah. legs. I couldn't. 
in responding. Your oxygen levels were through the roof. Yeah. Just, just connecting. But, but you finished strong, and that was great, man. I know that. I think it was the eighth round where you kind of, like, almost rocked yeah, him. Yeah, rocked him, yeah. Yeah, you, you had him, dude. You had him. So that was a great finish, man. And it's, it's just uh, amazing that you brought back the belt. You know, I reached out to you right like a week or two before the fight. I was like, I wanted to interview you before the fight, but I was like, you know what? I know that you you're trying to focus on on one thing only. And I, was, I didn't want to be like, ah, oh, let's let's do the interview before the fight. So I know yeah. that it can be a little bit compromising for your time and just focus, man. So, and that's very important, bro. Going into a fight of that caliber and going into your like the latter part of your professional career, you need to be like focused and and just be like dedicated to having all the little ins and outs of, of, of when you go into a battle like that. So thank you. For yeah. Sharing. That like that whole week before the fight, I was just, I mean, zoned in. I was in tunnel vision, man. Yeah. Like everybody should ask me like, how was London? And all the week that I was over there, I was just in my, my, my hotel room. I, I wouldn't go out or anything. I was just resting, you know, thinking of thinking about the fight and all the strategies that I was going to do to, to, to win the fight. I mean, I really didn't go out and explore it or anything. I mean, it was just, I went over there to fight and to get the work done. That's that's what it's all about, bro. Dedication and like focus, man. I I noticed that whenever you put your mind to something, and like you said, you're in tunnel vision. It's so easy to get distracted in, especially when you're in an outside place. You know, like in a beautiful city like London. I'm pretty sure I've never been there, but I've, I've seen pictures and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right mindset, you know, they strive with the last. Yeah, you'll get distracted. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things going on over there. Gonna be parties, clubs, and and you're gonna be the nightlife. Yeah. You can easily forget about the fight. You know, but. <laughs> But you were tunnel vision. That's great, man, because, I mean, you can see the results. And, and I know you said, dude, I want to get another fight before the year is over. But how does that look in right now? I know it's, it's game time right now, man. Yeah, but my, my hand is messed up from this fight. Oh, for real? I, yeah, I just actually went to the doctor this week. And I don't, I, just, I don't have a fracture, but I think that it's like a torn ligament. Just like Damn. a little But it's still hurting, so I'm just going to wait till February. Oh, that's to, good. That's good, fight. man. Yeah, they had yeah offered, I know. This fight, they had offered me a... Fight December eleventh on in Vegas. Oh shit! Shit, I wanted to fight, but I, I'm I'm just gonna you wait. You gotta let it heal. Yeah, just yeah, because if you, you go in there with a you know like a broken tool, it's, it's gonna be hard to like put it all together. Yeah, yeah. And my my fights from here on on, they're gonna be hard, bro. I mean, I have the yes. belt now. They, I mean, lots Very of guys nice. want it, so they're coming after I mean, you, bro. Yeah, I have a target yeah. on me now. Yeah, you do, man. You do. But it's, it's a good target to have. It's a good situation to yeah. have because it, it actually puts you into a, another state of mental focus, like tunnel vision, what you're saying. Like, now i got to protect this belt. <laughs> Not only that, but you got to bring your A game into every single fight and then prepare yourself, like, every single day, mentally, physically, spiritually, you know, all that stuff. So how do you, how do, you do that, bro? Because, I mean, it's like after a fight, you have to take a couple of days off or maybe a week or two before your body gets back into, like, it's 100%. How, do you, uh, how does that look, look out for you, man? I actually just rest, like, a week. Every time I fight and I get back to training, man, I just, you know, try to keep uh, my conditioning on point all the time. Try to stay ready all the time in case I get a call for a fight. But right now, like I said, my it's just my hand that's keeping me out of the yeah. gym. But I'm still running. I'm still trying to do a little workouts just that's to good. stay good. stay active. Yeah. And then um, I was going to ask you, like, um, like after a fight, like especially after Kamari, man, you wasted all your energy. What's your go-to meal, bro? What's your go-to meal after go right to after that fight? Yeah, I ate a uh, what's what's a uh, Five Guys a burger after oh, a fight. Yeah, I just I just wanted burger. a burger, a huge burger. Yeah, man. I was eating yeah. uh grilled chicken and you know all that. All the low carb food. Foods. Yeah, all that. That whole week I was over there. I was I just wanted some some meat, some something juicy, you know. <laughs> hey, unas carnitas asadas de Laredo, no? Verdad. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how do you do that, bro? Being in Laredo, you're surrounded by really good food, man. How do you maintain your weight, bro? Like, you got to be active all day, you know, every day. Yeah, but actually, I don't really gain that much weight, bro. I'm, I have, like, a fast metabolism. So, oh, that's good. Yeah, so I can have a, a few cheat meals here and there. Well, well that's good because what what is the weight you're fighting at? Fight at 130, super featherweight. Oh, man. So yeah, the most I go up to, it's, like, 140, so it's just 10 pounds. Damn, that's good. And that's when tall, I'm not dude. training. Yeah, You're that's when I'm not training. When I'm training, I'm I walk around 135, 136. It's just just like five, six pounds over the limit. Wait, so, yeah. Since you have a high metabolism, fast metabolism is like boom. You just yeah. burn calories. Yeah, yeah that's it's, good, it's pretty good because I don't really have trouble making weight, bro. I see other fighters bring down going down like 30, 40 pounds. I'm like, shit. Not it's me. hard, <laughs> man. Yeah, it's hard, bro. Yeah, like I've heard stories where like they're, you know, passing out because they're trying to make weight and, you know, they're 
drinking tons of water and or not actually not even drinking water limiting even, water yeah. limiting <laughs> water but like right after they they get their weight and like oh boom they're chugging the water mm -hmm. yeah. yeah man so that's, that's a pretty tough life man i mean how, how long have you been doing this for us and i mean i know you started fighting like around 2015 like when the record professionally yeah. yeah but i've but been boxing since i was like eight years old i had my first pro i mean amateur fight at eight years old so i've been doing this as a kid man man it's, 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 been, yeah. kid, bro. it's been yeah. your life Oh, yeah. oh, that's amazing, bro. And what, what, uh, what, what motivated you to like? Did your parents tell you, or like you just like, nah, I want to box, or what? Yeah, what just my my you? grandpa took me to a gym one day, and just so I could learn how to defend myself, and and I just never stopped. I liked it, I guess. I, I fell in love wow. with the sport. Yeah, and, and, and it, it's uh, yeah, it's helped it's... me out a lot, not only in boxing but like in life. It's mm -hmm. uh helped me to, to stay dedicated, disciplined. You know, I have you know if friends invite me to go out or something, and I can't because I have a fight or. You know, mm -hmm. whatever reason. So, I mean, it has helped me out a lot as a person and, and as an athlete. So, I'm I'm really grateful I, I've, I joined boxing. Yeah, dude, being disciplined is, I think, one of the hardest things that as a person, you know, if you don't have discipline for anything, it's kind of hard to to actually follow through with any goals and plans that you have in place. I actually learned mm -hmm. the hard way. <laughs> and so, yeah. like, now, uh, like this, like doing, doing this recording right now, there's a little bit of discipline because I had to, like, okay, I got to, my Saturday is not just, oh, I mean, just, you know, chill and not do anything. I and mean, I got to do something, okay. something that's motivating me, something that I'm passionate about, and like, like you in boxing, right? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I got to follow through. I got to call, call George and then just make sure that, you know, I, I could have easily said, you know what, George is going to party. You know, I'm not going to do anything, you know, tomorrow. You know, yeah. like, I, I And also, like, maintaining my health, bro, like my body, like make sure that I wake up early and get, get a run in, get a workout. Like, even oh, yeah. little things like that, bro, make a big difference because discipline is, is one of the, it's the hardest things to really, you know, like it's like tunnel vision, hyper focus, you know, getting things done, making sure that, you know, you don't slack off and stuff like that. So oh, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a, it's like, it's, I guess it's something that you learned to carry over into your life from boxing. That's, it's amazing, bro. And, uh, what boxing, what boxing gym in Laredo did you practice in? Oh, uh, I started uh, boxing in a pal boxing gym, West County pal from the oh, sheriff's really? department. I'm still there. Yeah. Is that, is that the one over, uh, Sabata highway? You know? yeah that's the one dude for real my, my little nephew used to go there my godson he used to go there for a while okay yeah i don't know my trainers are family friends so i mean they've known my grandpa since they were little kids that's amazing man yeah and they were professional good... professional fighters too for real yeah that's good man and then that's good because you're you're motivating the kids you're like hey man stay stay grinding you know like go out there and, and use your energy wisely you know, instead of like being out there and doing stupid stuff in the streets, yeah, yeah. you know, go to the gym and do something productive, man. Let that, let the energy out. Like boxing is a really good way to get all those stress factors out, man. Is that something that helped you too? Yeah, bro. Every time I go to the gym, there's, I mean, the, the gym I go to, there's mostly uh, little kids. They see me get there and train and I, I feel I motivate them to train and I'm just hitting the bag and they're looking at me and trying to do the same that I, that I do. So, I mean, it feels good. I mean, it feels I have a, I have to be a, a good role model for them. So that motivates me too to, you know, stay on the on the straight path and, and and keep doing good things. Man, that's good, bro. That's amazing because, like, you've been there since eight years old, right? Practically all your life for the last what? You're twenty eight, twenty years. I'm twenty five. Twenty five? Or you're twenty five? Yeah. yeah. For the last 20, 25 years, you've been there. I mean, yeah. I mean, for the last uh, what is it? I did, I did the math wrong. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> Seventeen years around. 17 years like that. that's a long time bro it's like a whole you know going from pre-k all the way to high school that's like a long yeah, time bro yeah. dedication and i'm pretty sure around along the way you had a lot of like ups and downs you know like should i keep on doing this or should i not keep on doing this did, did i ever cross your mind or not really yeah i've doubted myself uh so many times bro like am i really good to 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 do this and to get on the top level of boxing you know i've doubted myself a lot of times but you know i think at the same time that helps me to to, to train harder you know the fear of losing look i mean i don't i don't i mean i i don't think anybody likes losing but you know yeah. I, i'm on some type of another level of not wanting to lose so i think that motivates me to you know, keep on training harder and mm -hmm. actually my family also motivates me i mean they, they believe in me i mean they always tell me that i have all to 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 make it big to become a world champion and you know they just motivate me to keep on training harder and you know I, i'm not gonna let them down so you know that's amazing, bro. It's, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, like you need family to support this dream and support that passion because, I mean, you, when you have that foundation, it just propels you like further. Like, you know, you know, like, and you know, it's like, uh, I've talked to people where like, 
you're the parent looking at your son or your, or your daughter. I don't know if you have any kids, but when you're doing that, like I've done that, where like I'm telling my kids, like you have so much potential. Let's go. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when we overpressure them, they're like, oh man, like uh, I, I don't, I can't see myself there in that in that position yet. So, mm -hmm. but we plant the seed so that later on in life you can you know actually fulfill that dream or whatever that you have inside you that you you know that you have the potential to do that you know so yeah having the, the strong bond with the family and make, making sure that they, they you know support you in every single way but and keeping you on track too you know like hey yeah you know, you know like yeah. so, and, and, and who who's a who's their like number one go-to fighter like that you've studied like or number of no, which fighters have you studied like their, their style or like who, who inspired uh, you growing up um, Fighters is uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. and Roy Jones, Roy Jones Jr. Marquez, you said Marquez too? Marquez, yeah. Marquez, Marquez and Roy Jones. Jones, yeah. So I try to you know, watch. I grew up, I, I grew up watching Cesar. Julio Cesar what? Chavez. I grew up watching him, like watching his fights. Yeah. Yeah. They're straight right fights, bro. To the body, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I try to. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, watch some fights and just soak some some combinations in and you know try to imitate some of the of the punches they throw and some of the combinations and try to work uh, uh the combination in sparring and you know learn from the best yes man he was a good fighter and uh i like the one of the most epic fights that i remember from him it uh i think it was mildred taylor bro chavez oh, the last round knockout, last 10 seconds it was an amazing <laughs> fight man it was an amazing fight. He had so much durability for taking so much punishment, kind of like what you were doing. You know, you're taking punishment, but you were getting your punches in. Yeah. So I guess that you can see that inspiration in the fights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Because he, not, I think he broke his jaw, dude. Uh, Meldrick Taylor's jaw, and he messed him up, dude, or something like that. Yeah. It was a, I think he was losing the whole fight, bro. Mm -hmm. Chopped the whole fight, and until last round, last ten seconds, he knocked him out. Yeah. It was. A, it was a beautiful fight. Crazy. Yeah. A lot of bloody fights with with Cesar Chavez, man, and uh, also Roy Jones, man. Roy Jones was a freaking beast, bro. Freaking, I remember watching his fights, bro. It was amazing watching him. He was like the Michael Jordan of boxing at that era, you know. Yeah, it was slick, fast, strong, mm -hmm. flashy. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. flashy. Yeah, he had the arms down and like, yeah, come on, come on. And then, whoo, so quick. You couldn't get him, man, and then boom, knock you out. Knock you out. Yeah, yeah. that power, that quickness. Yeah, and Marquez also one of my favorites, man. Marquez is I I like the way he would uh be humble about like his his tra training. You know, he had like yeah. took it really serious. I think at one time he even drank his old piss. <laughs> but, <No. laughs> but uh, don't do they, that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do, you're not inspired to do that, huh? I'm not inspired. <laughs> no, nah, but not for real, dude. Like he brought it on, dude. Like he his fights were always like to the T, like super vicious. You know, he's going in, taking a lot of punishment, but at the same time strategically working the, the fights and it's he was a great fighter man i, I wish he yeah, was still fighting but i, yeah, I, yeah. I don't think he's gonna fight anymore long right Nah, i think he was gonna do an exhibition but no nah, he's not gonna fight any, anymore he's too old now yeah, like, well, he's just too old yeah man that, if you take a lot of punishment like you your your yeah. boxing life you know like you gotta take care of it oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah dude but dude so so I know that you've been getting a lot of publicity this past week or two, you know, from the city, man. How does that feel, bro? Like being, being coming back in the whole city, like giving you so much love, man. Oh, bro, it feels amazing, man. I just I still can't believe it, man. <laughs> <laughs> doing uh, I've been guest speaker at the courthouse and doing all these different events and getting support from from all the people of radio. I go to the store, they take pictures with me, and I mean, I just celebrity, bro. Yeah, Local celebrity. Yeah, I've been. Become a little popular now. <laughs> That's good, man. But it, it comes I don't let game. It, bro. It just motivates me to, you know, I love this, man, bro. I just mm -hmm. motivates me to keep on training harder, and you know, this is only the beginning for for something big. Yeah, so I gotta stay um, concentrated and dedicated, disciplined to, you know, to get to the top. And I love representing the radio, bro. I've always, every time when I fought in Miami, uh, I would say, you know, arriba la and you know, mm -hmm. in London, arriba la o sea. Siempre pongo el nombre de la en, en, el, en, la, en la tele, en, en el mapa. Yeah. Porque pues, aquí yo voy hoy, es en mi ciudad, la tengo que poner en alto. Yeah. Yeah, no, y pues, 
Laredo, man, like it has a, it's a beautiful little city. A lot of people ask me, hey, well, what, what do you think is good about Laredo? Like, man, the people, bro. I think the people here are just amazing. Like we have hospitality. Like we, you know, yeah. someone's got bottles, but at the same time, we're like, hey, you're part of yeah. Come down to Laredo. We're going to show you hospitality. You know, like it doesn't matter yeah. where you're from, man. But yeah. and it's good, man. Repping Laredo is just amazing, bro. Uh, I think we, we have a lot of talent here, bro. It's just that, you know. There is a lot of talent, bro. A lot of talent right now. Like, even just right now, like, the United South Panthers, bro, they're super really good right now. Like, their their team is just blowing up. I think they're in the state finals, state championships. I don't know, what, but they're going deep into the playoffs. Um, There's a lot of kids. Uh, Marco Raya, I think, what was his name? Raita. Oh, yeah. I know him. Yeah, you know? Raita, yeah. Raita, yeah. bro. Like, man, beautiful yeah. picture right there, man. Pff, throws hard. Great throws and everything. He went with wow. the what? He signed with the twins, right? Yeah, yeah, with the twins, bro. So it's amazing. Man. Lot, fucking bad bro. talent, bro, from the radio. Oh yeah. And then uh, we have a lot of boxers here, man. That I know you know Josh. Also, he's a great Josh fighter. Body, bro, yeah, he's my bro. <laughs> he's your bro, man. You guys are about <laughs> who's taller, you or him? Nah, he's way taller. He's, he's like way six, taller? Three, six four. Yeah, oh, yeah, shit. he's about six three. <laughs> Pinche Josh, no para que sea. Yeah, man, but it's a lot of great talent here in the radio, man. Um, and it's, uh, we're growing, like the city's growing. So we're about to have like, you know, fellas like you that, you know, representing the city like that and and just showing what we got, man. We got, I think one of the things that, that people don't understand about the is that we have this, like, we ain't going to lose mentality. You know, like we're going to go in there, we're going to yeah. go hard. We're going to go down swinging. We're going to go. Give it her all, yeah. It's not going to be an easy fight with us. You know, any oh, yeah. that we carry that mentality in almost a lot of things that we do, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, Drew. So, man, so it's been a really good interview, man. I don't know how much time you got, but if you have more time, this is infinite talks. So you can go for days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, well, um, one of the one of the things that I've seen also from the city, bro, giving you love, man. It's just like, um, you're you're getting like you're you're 25, right? Yeah, I'm 25. And it seems like I've seen you. You've been fighting here for like what? good eight years seven years mm. something like that yeah so like people are starting to like okay give you this this guy is actually legit like he's fighting you know, across seas you know bringing the belt back home we haven't seen that in years like the city is like is the start is growing mm -hmm. we're seeing you know people like you bringing like something that we only see on tv so when you he see it here bro it's just like amazing you know like ah, la madre, wait, this is actually <laughs> real and like you said like you can't even feel like it's happening because like it's it's so we all never see it we never really see it here like, so now that it is existing bro and and uh you're in that level bro uh, it's just you're you need to how to how do you gonna learn like not learn but how are you gonna bring that like to the next level bro like you're just gonna go hard like working out and stuff or what yeah i'm a actually i'm gonna start doing my camps in my camps in mexico city in the For central sure. ceremonial to me last mm -hmm. time i went through this past camp i went it i was training alongside with uh jaime munguia Carlos Cuadras, oh. yeah, there was Eric Morales too. I mean, Ooh. Hall of Famer. Wow. There was a lot of, uh, you know, great champions. So I mean, that's just motivation, you know, to keep training harder, bro. And Did you send those Eric, Eric Morales? You talked about. I was actually, see, yeah, salve, lo salve. Casi no hablaba con él, pero yeah. I was sparring one of his guys. Yeah, he okay. was tough, bro. He was a twenty and 0, 15 knockouts. So we were helping each other out. Actually, he had a. Well, they pay their their sparring partners. Mm -hmm. And I just went and offered them uh, my, my sparring, right? A sparring session, and they tried me for, for a day. They liked the sparring, and they kept me and, you know, let the other the, the other sparrings go. You know, mm -hmm. I was his main sparring for, for the whole camp. Wow, so it helped both of you, like him? Like yeah, 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 yeah. De hecho, cause... les pagaban a los sparring partners. Ellos contratan a los sparring partners sí. para, para todo el mes o dos meses. Y yo les ofrecí sparring, ¿verdad? Para yeah. ver si les gustaba. Y les gustó y a todos los demás les dijeron que se fueran y me, se quedaron conmigo nada más. Me querían pagar, pero dije, no, está bien. Yo estoy, me estoy beneficiando también del sparring. So, yeah. nos ayudamos uno al otro. Ah, right, comadre, güey. Just making yeah. also, that's, that's kind of like showing integrity también. Como, like, man, I, I'm doing it because, hey, this is benefiting yeah. me. No, no, no voy a tomar ventaja, you know, lo más. I'm yeah, so I just want to work, yeah. And that's good, bro. That's, that's, that's all, like, positive motivation bro going forward like todo eso te ayudar porque está haciendo conexiones güey y no nada más porque yeah. hey, you're not looking to, to make money all the time like yeah it's all about it's about money too but at the same time it's about making good relationships in, in the boxing community and, yeah, and yeah. showing that you're you're legit you know and i've also gained confidence because i mean sparring with those kind of guys top level guys and i mean they like the the work and you know i mean it's confidence for me too 
Yeah, dude, especially those those guys know what's up. Like Morales, Munguia, all those guys have been in like the really hardcore, you know, top fights where like level, yeah. top level fights, man. And and they see you and, like as a come up, like, hey, still, you know, to try, you know, I was like a to tenerlo aquí para que sea yeah. calidad la, la sparring session, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sí, no, hombre, es una, una bonita experiencia, una de todo desde el comienzo del camp, todo hasta mm -hmm. la pelea en London, o sea, todo es una una experiencia nueva para mí, como te digo, it's just motivation to keep on training hard because this is only the beginning of, of something mm -hmm. big. Yeah, and, and you, for you, like, it's, you've been doing it for years, but for a lot of us, you're like, oh, no, like, you know, it's the beginning, but nah, dude, you've been doing it for years, bro. <laughs> you've been doing it, it's, it's your life, bro, like, career, you know, so it's it's amazing you're taking it to the next level like that, and, and uh, Mexico, it was, it's a beautiful time to go to Mexico, <laughs> like, freaking weather is always amazing over there. And um the food is great, the people are great over there, you know, and then coming back and just showing your love to to the city and then demonstrating your skills in the boxing ring. And not only that, but just showing that you're you know a good individual inside and outside of the ring. So that's that's also yeah. pretty good, man. Carrying yourself, you know, yeah. having the the right people around you. All that matters, bro. It's all your squad, you know, like people people keep you in check. But uh, what what kind of recommendation would you give to a kid, old man, like who's looking up to you, like, hey, what would you give him, like, as a, as a as advice? I would keep um, stay dedicated, stay uh, disciplined, and you know, stay away from from bad friends, from drugs, mm -hmm. from alcohol, from everything, man. Just stay dedicated, listen to your parents, and you'll know, find something you love, and and you know, train or do the best that you can do, and you know, just stay motivated, bro, and follow your dreams. I'm a kid from South Laredo, bro. I mean, I'm from South Laredo, and you know who? Who? I was telling my mom, I've never thought I was gonna be fighting on the other side of the world, man. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't believe I, the whole time I was over there in the hotel, like in my my room, just laying down and thinking, damn, I'm in, I'm in London. I'm about to fight in a few days. I was like, I don't know. I just couldn't believe it, bro. From Laredo to London, bro. London. <laughs> from Laredo to London, and bringing back the belt, bro. It's not. No, it's not fast, you know. It's not, it's not, it's back without the belt, bro. <laughs> hey, bro, but like, you, what school did you go to in, in, here in the South area? Uh, I went to LBJ. LBJ, shit. Oh, that was your were with Jeff, dude. Yeah, Jeff, did, shout out to Digital Jeff in Alabama. Mi Jeff. Saludos, yeah, saludos, Jeff. Yeah, he's my younger brother. He's the one that told me about you, man. I was like, hey, this, this yeah. dude. How to, I remember he went to one of your first fights, bro. He, yeah, he, he actually he took, did like my first professional uh, uh, video. Yeah, like, dude, it's amazing. One second boxing, uh, my pro fight, my second pro fight, and mm -hmm. he he did like a badass video. Yeah, that's it's on YouTube, bro. I saw that video when he was making it. Yeah, <laughs> I went to the house like, hey, bro, I want you to check this out. Like, look, who this is? Uh, one of my former students, Castaneda. You know, he told me all this and like he showed me the video. Like he told me the inspiration for the video, so we knew about that movie. So when he was shooting the, the you know editing that video for you, I was like, oh man, like. Nobody's ever done this. Like we, yeah. we saw it in the movie, but now we put it in like the Raging Bull movie, right? Yeah. And then we're using it on you, and it looked amazing, bro. So I, I've known for I've known of you for years, bro. And like your story. So, <laughs> yeah. My brother was like, dude, this guy's gonna make it big, man. But watch him, watch him. Like he's dedicated. Da da da. Like I was giving all this, all this rundown. And when I watched that, when I watched that video, I was like, man, so I couldn't matter. Like it was just, you know, like the classic. You know, no one's ever done that, bro. Like if y'all have a chance, bro, go check out that video. Uh, Jorge Castaneda. I don't know what what's the title for that video, bro. If you know, the uh, Jorge Castaneda, the Raging Bull. Yeah. yeah, it's on it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. I'll put a link in the in the show notes. So y'all can check it out. But it's a beautiful video, man. Jeff, the shout out to Digital Jeff. Man, me and him, like since we were kids, we were like video kids. Like we were always making videos, so he carried that on and on. You know, yeah. making sure that he got good at that. But and now he's in Alabama. Shout out to to Digital Jeff in the Bama life. Bama. <laughs> See, he brought, he took Laredo to Alabama, so allá están comiendo tacos y todo. ¿Qué comemos aquí? Polo, me por allá. Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. But, yeah, man, I remember that video. It was a pretty good video. So, dude, uh, so you went to LBJ. And did you play any other sports or was this like you were chill? Yeah, I played uh, basketball and I did track. I mean track? Yeah. I've been playing sports my whole, since I was a little kid, bro. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, soccer, basketball, football. I was always... An active athletic kid, yeah, that's athletic kid. Well, which was which was your favorite though? Basketball, basketball, boxing. But I mean, yeah, yeah, before boxing, yeah, but uh, yeah, bas yeah, 
I was actually oh. playing basketball too. Yeah. Yeah. Did you did you happen to play with Alex Rodriguez? Alex Rodriguez. He's my cousin. No. I don't think no. So. What about no Beto? Maybe Beto. Nah, Beto's older. Yeah. The Rodriguez kids. Yeah, they're they're from OBJ as well, man. But what year were you playing there? Like two thousand four or five? Six. Played uh two thousand twelve and thirteen. Oh, two thousand twelve, man. I'm way off. <laughs> You're in middle school when I was in. Yeah. <laughs> dude, but that's a long time ago, dude. That time flies, bro. Two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen. It's almost ten years ago. Yeah. But time flies, bro. That's the yeah, man. I was about I was a basketball player too, but I was I was at South. You know, this is before LBJ existed. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. Put the put the you know the that you know the banners. Nah, I, <laughs> <nah>. <laughs> I was one of the first dudes in the, in that team, like in the school, to actually put up the banners. I was pretty excited. Oh, for about real? That. Yeah, <laughs> we're like we're like the '96. That was my graduating year. '96. You're probably 96. Were, like you're like three years old, bro. <laughs> I was born that year. 96. Oh, you're born '96. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're born '96. Yeah, I was in high school, bro. You're still a baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you were born. Uh, what was that? What was that? April. October thirty first. October. I mean, yeah, October. Yes, sir. Yeah, October. Yeah. October. Halloween. October, ninety six, bro. I was yeah. I was actually in college at that time already. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, bro. We're gonna journeys, bro. The journeys. Yeah, man. But uh, thank you so much for your time, bro. I know uh, it's it's uh, we're time to wrap it up. I don't like to keep the uh, the interviews too long because yeah, you know, yeah. people got time and they got their own busy schedules. But anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up, man? Uh, well, I think we talked about everything already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So thank you so much for your time, bro. I really appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you, bro. You're a, a upcoming legend. You know, you've been doing your, your grind and it's showing. You know, thank God he, he's blessed you with, the, you know, the health, the love, the support, you know, the foundation. And then the success to show that, you know, it, it is possible to put your dreams into in perspective and stay disciplined and it pays off at the end, you know, and, and, and you're still working in it. And then the good thing is that you still have the mentality and the vision that, you know, this is not it. Like I'm going forward, going to get work harder, you know, stronger, you know, make sure that you, you keep on showing up to, to defend that belt, you know, and not only that, but just in life, bro, life, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging, you know, perspective from a young man coming from you, you know, like you're going to. You're gonna see a lot of things, you know, coming your way. And you, when you when you have a disciplined mind and the right foundation, the right support, it's easy to like tackle those, you know, situations and keep on going forward. So I, I uh, ask you that the God to bless you, bro, in your in your journey to give you lots of health, lots of love, lots of happiness, and just lots of success. And that you always keep on, you know, being true to yourself and stay dedicated, bro, and disciplined. And, and thanks for the kind words to the kiddos and, and the people in the community, bro. And I really appreciate your time, bro. So uh, thank you, bro. Thank you for having me on. And you no, know, thank you to all the, the people that have been supporting me. And you know, I'm gonna keep on putting for Laredo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From London to Laredo. <laughs> <laughs> hey bro, hey, but uh before we wrap it up, I'm gonna give a couple of shout outs to to the you know our sponsors. You know, our, our you know, I wanna say sponsors, but it's just more like our people that that are you know hundred percent legit to us at the yeah. Infinite Talks podcast. I wanna give a shout out to Virace Events. That's my family's, uh, you know, reception center. If y'all want to get a little gig here for a quinceanera, a wedding, or anything, or kind of any kind of party, a yeah, celebration for the for the ring, you know, for bringing back the 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 belt, you know, so <laughs> you want to have a celebration there, holler at us. Yeah, but uh, also shout outs to Rush Athletics. That's my brother's uh gym for athletes, for athletes like like George and and upcoming athletes. My brother is a really great trainer. He's a uh, Rick Castillo with Rush Athletics Laredo. He has, uh, you know, training for sports, all kinds of sports for, for track, you know, boxing, you know, uh, ba baseball, football, any kind of sport that you want to work on in your agility and your performance. Holler at Rush Athletics Laredo. Go into his page. You can see what he's doing. A magical, magical stuff. A lot of kids have been a lot of success with his program. Also, shout outs to Digital Jeff and the Guru Cats. If y'all know about the Guru Cats, do you know about the Guru Cats, George? No, <laughs> I need to give you the four one one on that, bro. Working some good stuff with Jeff. Yeah, if you, if you go into Instagram Guru Cats, check it out. You'll be like, wow, what the hell is going on? These guys are going into cartoon world, you know. So yeah, working on a, on a. We have a digital book already, audio book. If you want to check it out, I really recommend it. It's a really good story on the Guru Cats journey, protector of the plants. It's a fictional book, but it has a lot of great messages in there for for anybody. We made it for kids, but it's also for adults and for anybody. <laughs> We have an audio book and you can check it out on audible you can uh i actually was a the voice actor for that book you're gonna check it out check out my beautiful voice 
I do a lot of voice acting on that book, and uh, it just, uh, it's an amazing journey, man. So, y'all, we're working on NFTs right now. If you don't know about that, you should get on it. Cryptocurrencies, all that stuff. Uh, we're, we're doing all kinds of stuff, man, here in the family, but we're just staying motivated. You know, just like George, staying disciplined, staying grinding. Um, we're making sure that, you know, we bring it to the table, that any, all the talents that we do have, you know, we make sure we, we use them wisely and we, we use something to produce something beautiful for the world, bro. Also, shout outs to everybody in the podcast game, the, the Happy Oscar show. I used to be in there with the Happy Oscar Sketch 83, you know, the artist who did all the artwork for, for the Guru Cats and the logos that we work with. And just amazing, man. We have a lot of, we have a lot of people in, in the game that are uh, producing so much good stuff here from the Raid bro. We have uh, King KRMC. He's my cousin. He does a lot of the music for the background. You're going to be listening well, after the post production, you're going to hear all the music that he produced. For the for the show and just for him like he makes a lot of beats a lot of yeah i have lots of projects going on right oh yeah man yeah we're super we're, 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 a, we're a huge family bro with different types of talents and we're finally you're like you know let's put it all together man we all got different yeah. talents but let's Looking put it all together, together. Oh, yeah. and form a uh you know like voltron like back in the days they used to form like this huge robot you know like <laughs> more powerful more powerful yeah. Than <laughs> So yeah, right. man, a lot of talent in the family and, and, and Laredo just in general. So shout out to everybody yeah. out there, man. Uh, and you for and wrapping it up, man, with a with a champ here, Jorge Castaneda. So thank you so much and uh, peace out, guys. Remember, we're not a brand, we're a frequency. And peace out. Hey, bro. Hold on, hold on, don't, don't, don't. Uh...